Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is part two of our PoriScript starter Pokemon series where we uh, create a new starter selection and in this video we are going to be creating the setup with all three Pokeballs and each Pokeball has three different options which we edit, which we change through uh, a script that we're going to put on Professor Birch. Um, so if you have not already watched the uh, second PoriScript video in this series, uh, make sure to watch it because we set up our first Pokeball. Now we are going to um, do the exact same thing uh, that we did in the first video to set up two more. Um, so you're just going to create a new object, you're going to give it the item ball, you're going to find a flag for it, we need to find a flag for it in flags.h, uh -uh, and you need to do it for all three of these. So we need three Pokeballs, each with their own flag, and uh, all, you know, with the item ball graphics, so they all look like that. Now you're going to create a fourth object, and you don't have to give it Professor Birch if you don't want to, obviously. You could make it a sign, um, but um, you could make it anything. But we're going to use Professor Birch just because, obviously, this is his lab. Um, so we are going to give Professor Birch... Um, we are not going to give him a flag. He will get a script eventually, but we don't put it in there. But just change, you know, the graphic to Professor Birch. And with that ready, we can get started um, scripting uh, the actual interactions that we will um, have to make to create all of this. So like in the last video, I've already pre-written the script because it's long and it would take a long time to write while we're going over the program. Um, and it's definitely not worth it. Um, so for now, we are going to jump into talking about uh, this script that I have here to um, to create this starter scenario. Now, first, before we get started, you'll notice that this is a long file. Do not let it get to you because a lot of it is copy and pasted, and part of that is for a reason. This should easily be able to be shortened um, once you start to get the hang of how PoriScript works. Um, with using variables, we should be able to, a lot of this is copy, this is a script for Totodile, this is a script for Mudkip, this is a script for Trico and Chikorita and Bulbasaur. We should be able to shorten these down into, into one or two or three instead of six or, or nine for all the different nine options that I have here. Um, and that is a, a challenge that I give to you, um, and I might make another video on it later where I do shorten it down uh, and we go over that. but. Um, I think that you should try to take it on yourself because it is an interesting topic um, and uh, uh, refactoring the code to be shorter will teach you a lot about how um, everything interacts with each other. Um, but for now we're going to jump into this program that I've written. It's very direct so that it's easy to understand and that's why it's long like this is because the control is very simple. Um, so we are going to start by talking about one of the scripts for the Pokeballs. So we have all three of the Pokeballs have their own scripts. Pokeball 1, Pokeball 2, and Pokeball 3. And you will need to put these Pokeball scripts um, here inside of their, uh, inside of their, Poke in their script values in Poriumap. Each one will have Pokeball 3, Pokeball 2, Pokeball 1. So make sure to do that. Uh, but we have three different Pokeball scripts. And I will uh, upload all this code in the description um, so that you can look at it if you want to. But our Pokeball script, when we walk up and we click on it, first it locks. That's the first thing it does. Then it checks this big conditional here, this scary looking conditional. But it's actually pretty simple. So it starts with a not and not whatever is inside of these brackets. So if whatever is inside of this is true, if this is true, then we not it, so then it's false. So then this whole thing is false, so we skip it and we go down here. If whatever is inside of this is false, if this whole thing is false, then the not, the not, the exclamation point, it makes all of this true. So then this whole statement is true, so then we run the code inside of the if statement. So now to figure out how it works, we have to look inside of what we're notting, now these are flags, these are actually the flags that we used for a poke Pokeballs. You might have different ones and this is where you put them. If the flags that you chose for your Pokeballs, you are going to be putting here. So if you're trying to run my code, if you just copy and pasted it from the file that I linked in the description, it's not working. This could be why. Um, and also with the variables, you, you might be using a different one. So the flag, 
all of these flags are accessed the same way we access the bar if we're actually accessing it. We didn't do this in the last video. Uh, we, we, we didn't access the flags, we just set them. But you need to use the flag function to actually access what's inside of them. Then we are using these conditional operators. This is how we write or with conditional operators, just two of these tall pipelines. So we, if this flag or this flag or this flag, if all of these are true, then this whole thing is true. If one of them is true, then this whole thing is true. The only time it's false is if all of them are false. And then we have the not, so the only time this whole statement is true, the only time this if happens, if all of these are false. Because if all of these are false, this results to false. False or false or false is false. And then not false is true, so this is true. But if any one of these are true, if we picked any ball up, then we do not run this code. It's as simple as that. Um, we run this next code, which says don't take another. So basically, if we've picked up a ball, it says don't take another because we only want to be able to pick up one. You can remove this if you want, if you want to be able to have three different Pokemon, if you want to be able to choose a grass, water, and fire starter from the nine options. Um, you could remove that and you would be able to pick up all three balls and you'd be able to change which Pokemon in each ball you want. Um, but we're gonna keep it like this because it's more how the games actually, you know, do the starters. You can only pick up one at a time. Um, so we were going to jump into the control of this if statement. So if they're all false, if you haven't picked up a ball, then we are going to run this code. This code says if var, var unused, this is just a variable that we have taken from vars.h, like we took our flags from flags.h, and we just picked an unused var because we need one to store the state of whether or not we are picking Johto, uh, Hoenn, or, um, or Kanto starters. Obviously they don't have to be Hoenn, Johto, or Kanto starters. Those are just the groups that I have chosen for this video, uh, just to make it easy. So if we are in state zero, if var var unused is equal to zero, if the variable is zero, then we are going to call this function that is basically just a function that gives us mudkip, very similarly to in our video right before this. If it's equal to one, if it's equal to the Johto variable that we, we everything that's one is Johto, if you see here Chikorita and Cyndaquil, um, then we run this code for Totodile. If it's equal to two, then we run this code for Squirtle. And these are just our functions down here. Like I said, the call in the last video, the call just calls one of our functions, one of our scripts, sorry, it calls our script. You can call scripts outside if they're global. Um, if the script is a global script, you can call it from any script in the entire game, any map script, it doesn't matter. But um, obviously these aren't global, we don't have to worry about that. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we are going to, um, now that we have, uh, you know the control flow of this program we have to we have to actually affect this var we have to change it from zero to one to two depending on uh which which set of starters we want to look at um, because right now it doesn't change it's just staying there so we have to write our birch script which is what's here um so when we go and we talk to professor birch this script runs now this script locks the player it makes Professor Birch face you, just so you know, so he's talking to you, so you're not talking to him from the side and he's still facing forward. And it has this exact same if statement here, which just checks to see if you've already, if you've already picked up a ball. If you've picked up a ball, then it's gonna say, take care of your Pokemon, and that's it. Uh, um, if you haven't picked up a ball, then he's gonna ask you, would you like to see more? And it's gonna have a yes or no. And this is where you're given an input. If you want to see the next round of Pokemon, you choose yes. If you don't, you choose no. So if you choose yes, you run this code. Otherwise, it just says, choose your Pokemon wisely. And then it waits for the message to end, it releases, and it ends this script. Um, but if you do choose yes, if you want to see more, then we run this code. If the variable is yes, then we run what's inside of it. Now. This right here is, uh, it's not just as simple as you might think because we want it to wrap back around um, when we are on, when the variable is equal to zero, when it's equal to Hoenn, we want to just add one. 
so that the variable is now one and it's going to our Jodo starters. And then when it's at one, we want to just add one again so it's two, so that when we uh, so that it's our Canto starters. But when we're, when the variable is equal to two, we want to set it back equal to zero because we don't have anything defined for three or four or five or six. We only have things defined for zero, one, and two. So we have another if statement if the variable var unused is not equal to two, which the only time that's going to happen while we're adding stuff is when it's when it's one or zero. So if it's one or zero, then we're going to add var one to var unused. So if it's zero, we add one to it. If it's one, we add one to it. Else, which happens when it's two, if it's not two, but then if it is two, then we run this. If it is two, we just set it back to zero. And it's as simple as that. Set var, var unused, zero the name or the value that we're setting the bar to. So we add one to the bar by setting it with the second parameter here and we can set it here with a, with a zero for the set bar. So um, this basically when we talk to Professor Birch it just cycles through zero, one, two, three and those zero, one, two, three cycle through the options that our Pokeballs, um, that our Pokeballs have to, to choose from. So we are now cycling through our options. So we uh, are, you know, when we run all of our scripts for Pokeball 1, Pokeball 2, Pokeball 3, we will get different results when we talk to Professor Birch. Um, so now that we have covered that, I'm just going to briefly go back over uh, this script. Uh, it's pretty much exactly the same. Actually, it might be exactly the same as the, um, the only difference is, is for these, um, is there are multiple of them. So this is Mudkip. Um, we have species Mudkip, species Mudkip, you know, you receive a Mudkip, you receive a Mudkip, but here it's Totodile, 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 Totodile. Um, now for the water types, we have flagged the first flag that we used for all of the water types, because all of the water types are coming out of one Pokeball. So they all share the same flag. So we want that flag and they also share the same object. The remove object, it's the object one. This Pokeball is object one here. This Pokeball is object two and this Pokeball is object three and they all have different flags. But because of the way we've organized it, the water Pokemon are on object one flag zero X zero 20. But the, the grass Pokemon, they're on object two zero X zero 21 all of the grass Pokemon, 2, 2, 21, 2, 2, 21. And the fire Pokemon are on object 3 and 0x22. So um, that's the only real difference between all of these. They're just copy and pasted. Um, and again, you can certainly um, shorten this by, uh, by making a variable for, uh, for the species and assigning the species assigning the species value to the variable since variables can hold like uh, pretty high values so in here instead of using a variable for the state um, we we well we you still will use a variable for the state but you will use more variables and you will assign the actual Pokemon into the variable and then you will call that variable in place of species mudcap you will have the variable here and here and 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 uh, the main concern, the hardest part, is figuring out how to change the text, how to buffer the species name into the text boxes. And I'm going to leave that for for you to look into. Um, I'll probably cover that in a later video, um, just because it's a little important. I'll probably do a lot about text, actually, a whole video about different things. Um, but um, I'm going to leave that for now because this script as it is, um, it, it's going to work. Um, we're going to cover these last two options up here, um, these last two things. Like I said in the last video, we want a map script for this. Um, so the problem is, is our, when we're coming in and out um, and when we're first initialized, we want to make sure the variable is zero. We don't want it to be any funky numbers. We want it to be zero. So when we first transition into the map in our map scripts this is the condition for a map script and then you define the script that you want to run and the script can be any of these scripts that we have here we define the script here which is ball default which is the default position which is zero we just set the variable to be zero 
but we can run any script here, anything at all. This map on transition, all it does is when we walk into the map, when we first load in, when we transition, it will run this script here after the colon. And it, this just sets it equal to zero, so we always start off at zero. Um, and that just keeps our code nice and clean, make sure we don't get any funky values. Um, so that, I believe, covers the differences, um, the things that we've added to the last uh, script in the last video. Um, so make sure you have everything set up properly, make sure you take your scripts and put them inside of your event objects in Porymap and save Porymap. Um, Professor Birch, like I said, doesn't need a flag because we're not disappearing him at all. Yours might if you want to disappear him, but um, also don't remove object 4 because you'll remove Professor Birch. Uh, make sure all your Pokeballs have your scripts, make sure they have their flags, and make sure they match your Pori script files. And then you're just going to want to save and you're going to want to compile. Um, I've already done that uh, because I had finished this code already. Um, you're going to see this is not the same uh, decomp project actually that I usually use, um, but it's pretty much the same. Um, but we have the same setup here, and we can click. Oh, I did not mean to receive the mudkip actually. So we are not going to be able to uh, see how it looks, but see it says don't take another. Don't take another, we're actually going to reset real fast. And we're going to make sure to turn off. Do you want to choose Trico? No, you did not choose the Pokemon. We can walk away. Hello, would you like to see more? Yes. Look, now there's Totodile. Now there's Chikorita. Now there's Charmander. Now there's Bulbasaur. And when we go back, now there's Trico again. Now there's Mudkip, and we can choose Mudkip, we can give it a name, and when we open our bag, um, here is Mudkip with our Master Ball and Hydro Pump. Um, so yeah, uh, that is uh, advanced starter creation. We now can't choose our Pokemon, like I said. Um, I added Collision back to this table so that you can't run through it. Uh, so now we can, if we wanted to uh, actually you know, use this in our game, you'd also want to make sure that you delete all of the events up here um, because you don't want to have your other starter selection uh, in your game still because those scripts will still run. So you want to make sure to delete all those objects from Pori Map, maybe even delete their scripts from the scripts file, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to as long as they're removed from Pori Map. Um, and you might want to set up your own script so that it doesn't block so, or so that it blocks you until this is in, until this is not true. So until this is set, until this comes to this part, you know, you have the same thing set up, or you know, just without the not, um, and then you could do it up here, um, and then you have the code in here that's like, if this is set, then you know, it lets you do it. If it's if it's not, then it blocks you and it makes you walk back down. Um, and we'll cover movement scripts in another video, um, but. Uh, you will probably want to make sure to change your uh, change your scripts in your game to match the new starter selection if you actually want to use it. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, that is going to be all for this video. Um, it wasn't as long as our first one because we had stuff to build off of. Uh, like I said, I encourage you to shorten this and to see how small you can get it without losing clarity. Um, if you have any questions, uh, if you, if I made a mistake, if I need to clear anything up, just leave a comment, uh, and we'll see you on the next one.